love and beauty endless words. People and praise God. It is indeed another day that the Lord has given to us, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. I hope you have been blessed throughout the week. And my name is Agnes Wanjiru Acharya, and on behalf of the Vika and the entire youth ministry, we would like to welcome you into this week's devotion. And before anything else, shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for another chance to come and worship and learn in the new house of God. We are praying well as we listen to this word of God, that you are going to prepare our hearts, oh my Father, and you are going to use the minister of the word as your mouthpiece, oh God, for the honor and glory of your name. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we have prayed. Amen. And our lead scripture today comes from the book of Job, chapter 2, from verse 9 to 10. And I shall read. His wife said to him, Are you still holding on to, to your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. And this is the word of God. Ministering to us today is a man, a young man for that matter, and a friend to this parish. He goes by the name Philip Titus. He serves as a play reader in the Nairobi Diocese. And we hope that you are going to be blessed even as you listen to him. We thank God for this opportunity to be here again this day. It is the gift of God and we don't take it for granted. And I welcome you this afternoon even as we gather to share briefly about the word of God and to encourage ourselves. And I assure you that it is well and it shall be well with us. So, uh, my name is Titus Philip. I'm born again. Jesus Christ is my saviour. And I'm delighted to be associated with that title. It is public that I'm born again and I love Jesus Christ as my Savior. Now, uh, just in the quest to share with us young people this evening, I was meditating upon the Word of God in the book of Job. And I'm sure that you have read this book before, the book of Job. But I want to just ask to catch up something very uh, small this evening, even as we, even as we encourage ourselves, and even as we keep on waiting for the Lord and waiting on God, even as we go through our daily duties, and so, go with me to chapter two, verse nine and ten of the book of Job, chapter two, verse nine and ten, and I shall read the word of God. And the Bible says that his wife said to him. Are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? And in all this, Job did not sin in what he said. Praise the Lord. That is the word of God. And so these two uh, verses in this book of Job chapter 2 comes as a conversation between a woman and her husband. But let me take you back a bit and give you a base to understand the origin of these two uh, verses. Job was a man, a righteous man, and he came from the land of Uz. And he was a righteous man. The Bible says that he was a righteous man. In fact, the Bible says that there has never been a righteous man in the, in, the, in the area, in the, in the region of Eastland, like Job. And so the Bible says that he was righteous. He did what was right before God. He walked in the uh, righteous ways. He gave God his heart. He continued in the walk of God and he shunned evil. And he, he, he was so much into the things of God. He gave his life and his, uh, himself to God so that he can serve God. And that's maybe even me and you. We have been walking with God and we have given ourselves to God. We are born again and we are serving God and we are delighted in that. And such was Job too. And so the Bible says that Job was also rich. The Lord blessed Job immensely. He was far much blessed in terms of material, in terms of family, in terms of righteousness. He was blessed. The Bible says that he had a lot of flock. He had sheep. He had uh, 
oxen he had camels he had donkeys and they were in great numbers and he was very very blessed of the lord and so the bible says that after some times satan came and incited god against job and the bible says that satan told god that job is serving you and giving you his heart because you have blessed him that if you could take away his possession and you and and you do away with everything that he's having he will disown you and so god allowed satan to go and tempt job to go and take away everything that belonged to job and satan came and the bible talks from verse 14 chapter 1 verse 14 the bible talks about news coming when he was in his house he was rejoicing and then the bible said that a servant came and 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 brought news that the donkeys and the sheep have been stolen by invaders people came and they stole everything they killed the servants and the shepherd and they took everything and the bible talks about another scenario that while the servant was still speaking about this and giving his news another one came with another news that uh that uh his 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 another uh, set of flock were taken and they were they, they, there was nothing left and before even he finished talking about that another servant came and said and told job that your children your sons and your daughters were merry making together but the fire of god fell from heaven and it killed all of them and he is the one who escaped to come and bring the news and so it was sad before job and the bible says that immediately job went down and cried to god in in fact the bible says that he tore his garment he went down and put on the sackcloth and went to the ashes and he started crying and he started mourning and calling on god and praising god the bible says that he worshiped god he did not think about the things that has been taken away from him he did not think about what was lost he focused himself to god in other word he challenged satan because satan has uh, gone and satan challenged him before god that if you will take everything that he uh, he has he will disown you but he did not disown god and so this brings to me that worship is not for material according to job and worship is not a feeling worship is not an emotion worship and being righteous and walking with god does not have anything to do with our possession worship and walking with god is a lifestyle is something that needs to happen whether you are in a situation worse whether you are in a situation good whether you are in which kind of condition we still need to worship the bible says that he went and he continued worshiping god and he gave himself to worshiping god and he cried to god and so the bible says and that is when i read to you the two scriptures that after that satan came again and he was afflicted with diseases and the bible says that from the foot to the to the head to his head he was afflicted with painful boils and when he was in pain he was crying his wife came and his wife advised him in fact he did she did not advise him his wife came to tell him to disown god to curse god she told him to curse god so that he can die because according to his wife god had forsaken him and then he had no reason he had no reason anymore to continue worshiping god because god has forsaken him and so the bible says that the woman advised that you should disown god and curse god so that you can die but the bible says that job replied and said you are talking like a foolish woman shall we accept good from god and not trouble and so he challenged his wife so look god a uh, job after challenging satan who went to him influence him before god he comes and now again he's challenging his wife he's proving even to his wife and you know the bible says that when a woman and a man marries they become one 
but he was able to disown even himself because in this case his wife was his body he is one but he changed his mind he disowns himself he says that no we cannot just accept good from god but not bad and so according to me i feel like i will take everything and i want to advise us that in your walk with god in your salvation let nothing separate you from god let nothing take away the joy of salvation from you let not even your parents let not even your mother but i want you to obey them i want you to talk to them and to revere them and to obey them because it is even a commandment to obey them but let me advise you that nothing should come before you and god because god is above and god created you let nothing come before you in fact the scripture says that what can separate us from this wonderful love that we have received from god is it money is it material is it suffering is it persecution nothing we suffer every day for the sake of the glory that we are waiting for and so nothing should come to separate you from god the bible says that he disowned the advice from his wife and he even downgraded his wife and called her talking like a foolish woman let nothing come before you currently we are going through hard moment and just like job we have gone through more of them we have gone through storms just a few months we were told that a virus has come and the virus was deadly and when the virus came and that is one scenario and after that there was the lockdown and after the lockdown we were told some of us i know we are students some of us we are hustling we are so young we have just started developing our careers and it is uncertain we don't know what to do but the news came bad news and then another bad news came and then another bad news came and la- uh, a few days ago i heard that even schools will not be able to be opened this season they are pushing to the next year and so news has been uh, uh, we have been receiving bad news after another and this is me and you and i want to remind you and i want to encourage you that let nothing separate you from the love of god let nothing separate you from worship of god let nothing touch the salvation that you received from god because it is precious there is nothing precious like salvation schools are good but let me tell you the eternity is better than school our careers that we are talking about we are now at home and we are now desperate we have nothing to talk about we are just helpless we don't know where to go we are just in uncertainty but i want to encourage you that even in this let nothing touch your worship because your worship is so precious your worship is your life your worship will speak for you because it is today we are we may not be able to perceive it and to receive from it so much today but i can assure you that the bible says that no eye has seen nor no ear has heard what he has in store for them who love him and continue so continue diligently in your walk with christ work on your salvation diligently continue preaching the word of god continue reaching out continue even studying at home continue doing those homeworks sharpen your skills sharpen your mind sharpen your ways of worship pray praise the lord wherever you get time let me tell you by the way the bible says in john chapter 4 21 that the true worshipers shall worship the lord in truth and in spirit and not in the mountains not under the trees and by the way let me add not in the halls no wonder we are not in church right now but you can still worship you can still call on the name of the lord you can still seek him because it is neither at the mountain it is neither at the down uh, down the trees it is neither at the valleys but in our heart my heart burns because i want to worship him because i'm a true worshiper and i charge you to be the true worshiper who job was he was a true worshiper nothing will take his presence the, the presence of god away from him nothing could extinguish the fire of worship and walking the righteous life to with god and so i want to encourage you i know you guys are young 
And I know you guys are looking up to God. And I, I know you guys are looking up for a lot. You guys had a lot of promises. You guys had a lot of plans. When the year began, we were psyched up. We had plans. We had uh, 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 preparations. We knew that we would do one, two, three. We wanted to sew up with wings. But I want to assure you that the chance is still there. But let nothing extinguish. Let nothing touch our worship with God. Because he's watching us. And because he knows us. He is having us covered. And it shall be well with the righteous. Praise the Lord. And so that is my encouragement to you today. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because you are good. Thank you for reminding us that, God, we need to be steadfast and we need to be diligent. We need to be focused with seeking you, Lord. And I pray, Jehovah, my Father, God, that these dear ones who have listened, these dear ones who have watched, and them that are going to watch, and them that are going to watch even time coming, Lord, you may spare them, Jehovah. You may hold them, Jehovah, my Father, peacefully to yourself, God. Guide them and empower them and give them the spirit and the zeal to continue in you, to continue walking in you, Jehovah God, to continue serving you diligently because, Jehovah God, they need your Holy Spirit, God. We thank you, Jehovah. We pray for aid to them that are needing, in need, Jehovah God. We pray, Jehovah my Father, for provision to them that are lacking. We pray for healing to them that are sick. We pray, Jehovah God, for a touch of change, Jehovah God. We pray that you take away fear and, 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 and worry this moment and give us satisfaction and strength and power and confidence in you. We give you thanks and we honor you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we believe. Amen. Thank you. May God bless you, keep you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? less love and beauty, endless words. For nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Your presence Your presence is heaven to me Your All about this room, let's declare treasure of my heart and of my soul. Say, treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my witness, you are merciful. You are merciful. Regardless, redeemer.